Hey there, it's Jenny and it's the new year. Welcome to 2017. Let's hope this will be a better year than last year. It's good to have you along for the ride and uh, I'm continuing this series that I've been doing where I was asked to uh, show off my entire locomotive collection. So uh, I thought I'd uh, do that. And uh, as you can see in front of me, um, we're upstairs now in the spare room and this is where Grove Street Yard lives. This is the portable layout that I built quite a few years ago now. Featured in a number of different magazines, been to exhibitions, but here it is. And at the moment it's being used to store an awful lot of locomotives uh, because with uh, winter time around I don't like to leave anything out in the shed so everything's kind of just ended up higgledy piggledy in here so let's see now uh, we're going to move around and what have we got well actually let's go down to the very bottom here and uh, Grove Street Yard is stored in two pieces the room's not really big enough for me to uh, move out far enough to actually show you this full bit of model but the reason that I've, I've come down to this level is because hidden away underneath we've got two of my locomotive collection so we've got a class 4 diesel shunter here uh, again I mentioned this in fact this very locomotive I mentioned before uh, I think we're in the conservatory, D2267, and this is uh, Backman Weathered release. I think it's the only version that they released uh, factory weathered in the BR Blue, so uh, that's hiding out underneath here. Split chassis, uh, but it doesn't really matter too much. It does actually seem to work quite well. Hiding away underneath the gantry tray, uh, the gantry, get, getting my teeth around that one, underneath the gantry crane, and uh, this overhead building piece here we've got 25 052 uh, not really a good shot of it by virtue of where it's being stored but this is a factory weathered uh, Backman release of the 25 one and I think from memory this was the very first release uh, that was factory weathered and had direction controlled lights. So the Class 25 has sort of evolved quite a bit since it was very first released by Backman. Now I'm not appearing on camera today because of two reasons. One, the room's a bit on the small side to keep hiking the camera around. And also because uh, I'm afraid the festive um, indulgence has meant that my body has rebelled and for the first time since I was about 20 I've broken out in spots which tells me I've eaten far too much grease but I will tell you that it was very much worth it uh, it was very nice <laughs> lots of food oh dear I can feel my left ventricle slamming shut uh, just at the memory of what I've been eating <laughs> so I'm not going to appear on camera but right let's uh, I'm going to see actually can I get in there kneel down right first of all let's have a look um let's tackle this front row first we've got golden plover 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 um it looks to me as if it's something that should be pronounced golden plover but my father called it golden plover which sounded really weird to my ears but i, I stand to be corrected as to how that should be pronounced uh, this is a Hornby model, uh, and it was it's one of the super detail ones, so locomotive drive. Uh, it's a Corridor Tender Lake Crest 6031, one of the A4 Pacifics, uh, and we can see we've got overhead warning flashes on there. Uh, Hornby super detail, I bought this second hand comparatively recently actually, I think when I bought my uh, uh, the first of my packets. Uh, this was in on the second hand pile and to be honest at the price it was I've got a real soft spot for these A4 Pacifics so had to get it. it hasn't really run actually I must uh, I must test run it and make sure that it runs okay. Next to it we have an early crest non-corridor um, A4 Pacific and this is 60020 and this is uh, let's see what have we got Guillemot. Again, purchased second-hand, uh, and 
Oh, let's just see if we can move around there a bit. Uh, again, it's very difficult to show you these because of the way they're being stored. Uh, but this was bought second hand, again at a price I couldn't refuse. Same super detail, uh, locomotive drive uh, version. Uh, what have we got? Let's go, well, let's have a look here. Hornby Sentinel. Uh, this is the later rod drive version that they did. Um, and it's in a sort of a, it looks almost like a, a factory, a standard factory livery um, with the lining there and the Sentinel. Uh, but lots of wasp stripes. Uh, just seeing if I can get in there. Uh, we're going to get a sort of a helicopter shot here, unfortunately, which I, I don't personally like. I think the helicopter shots always look a bit odd. Uh, but it's down there. Uh, I bought this. It's my only rod drive example, and it was really just a case of um, I do like these little Sentinel diesel shunters. We've got two more of these. Uh, these are the chain drive examples. The real one, slightly less power to them, driven by chains instead of by the rod drive. But this is the Manchester Ship Canal DH16, and uh, as uh, anybody who's read the articles about Grove Street, Street Yard will know, um, it's nominally modelled on a fictional representation of the kind of essence of Trafford Park. So uh, when this was announced and released, I just had to have one. So I, I bought these when they were first released, and uh, seeing now they're actually available, brand new, for down to £40, uh, which probably shows they haven't sold perhaps as well as they deserve to. Uh, but I did pay full price for this, I don't really regret it to be honest. Um, the fact that I could get a Manchester Ship Canal liveried locomotive was just too good to be true. Next to that we've got the NCB liveried version and in fact you can see that the way the light's shining on that, it is highlighting the th how thin the plastic is on those uh, side rails. You can see it looks like a different colour but I'm assuring you there where the uh, between the the B and then the is that an OE? Um, there seems to be like a change in colour but I can assure you under normal lighting conditions you'd never really see that. We've got a B17. This is the newer super detail version. We're going to have to go to a bit more of a helicopter shot unfortunately. And uh, this is Gilwell Park. Again, Hattons were having a sale and it was reduced down to, I think it was about £72. And um, it is a fabulous model. As dinky little tender there, I'm told that's uh, so that the entire locomotive length would still fit onto the standard um, uh, Northeastern, Northeastern Railway or Great Eastern Railway turntables, uh, certainly in the London and Northeastern Railway area there were turntables that these had to fit on and the only way they could do it was uh, by having that slightly dinky short little tender but it's a beautiful locomotive it runs incredibly well and it's a shame really that these are getting knocked out so cheap in so far as it means that they're probably not selling as well as Hornby anticipated although it might be actually because uh, Hornby did have do their usual trick of flooding the market with many different versions very, very quickly. And you really can't do that. But I took great advantage of uh, that uh, cut price sale. And there, there she is. Right. We've got uh, an A1 here. Again, bought second hand. Uh, I do buy a lot of locomotives second hand. It's really a very good way of doing it because let somebody else pay the depreciation. But this is a brilliant model. This is actually the Backman A1. I know Hornby do also do their own version of the A1. Um, but um, to be honest with you, I'm perfectly happy with this. Abaddonian. Um, it's not one I was familiar with before. 60158, late crest on the tender. Look at that rivet detail. Isn't that superb? But it's a good runner, a bit hard to get on the track because of the design of, let me just see if I can focus in there, that rear pony truck. It doesn't actually go from side to side like you might expect, but it's got a kind of free floating axle. So getting it on the track is a real pain in the bottom. Uh, right, let's see, what's next here? Aha, yes, these three. Um, Oh, I, I was rather condescending in the way that I said that. I didn't mean to. Gosh, that bush is really annoyingly 
in the wrong the wrong position but uh, you have to trust me that's number 11 and this is a Hornby Packet W4 very recently released sold out as well um, which just really shows how well these locomotives have been received it's a Manchester Ship Canal uh, locomotive uh, so again like the Sentinel had to have this uh, the MSC actually owned two of these I think they were bought together as a pair so number 11 and number 12 they did originally have uh, names of ports that was the uh, original naming scheme for uh, the Manchester Ship Canal Company's locomotives and I think this one was uh, Alexandria or something like that and I have a feeling number 12 was Jaffa a lovely little locomotive I'm kind of hoping if they do do another run instead of doing just more number 11s that they do actually do number 12 because uh, she'll be in the same livery just uh, that one small detail difference next to her we have Dodo this is the same packet W4, but you can see some detail difference there between the dome. See on um, MSC number 11, we've got some minor detail differences up there, uh, which just show that Hornby can actually do a fair few different combinations to represent quite a few, if not all, of the W4 classes that were built. This is in the standard uh, packet works leaf green with lining, which is what the locomotives would have appeared from the factory in if uh, a customer didn't actually specify they wanted it in a particular paint scheme. So certainly very suitable for um, an awful lot of the W4s. And again, I think if uh, they do produce another run of these in this livery, they should do it with a uh, different uh, name on it. I'm just trying to, it's very difficult to, you're just about to see Dodo there. But either do with a different name or no name at all uh, might actually suit a lot of people because uh, they'll probably end up renaming them anyway. Now this this here you'll recognise from the box opening and review that I did just before Christmas. And this is the Huntley and Palmer's D. Uh, Huntley and Palmer's had a number of locomotives, two packets in fact. So again, there is scope for another run of this in the blue, but uh, I think it's number, uh, what's saying number, letter C was the locomotive. Uh, there'd be scope for another run like that, and certainly I'd be very tempted to buy the sister locomotive of this. Um, but it's, uh, they're wonderful locomotives, actually, all three of these run very, very well. I have had them running. There's a tremendous weight to them. Uh, now behind there, just a quick look, because people always ask, oh, what was that in the background? Uh, that was actually a model rail special commission engineer's uh, wagon. Uh, collector's Club uh, special commission wagon, that and the other um, ZGV behind it. Kerno model centre engineer's wagon at the back, and that one was a model zone special commission triple pack. Uh, oh, and there's a, I think there's another one of another model zone special commission triple pack uh, hiding underneath that building. Let's go in for you. This is the Backman 1F uh, number 41708, and this um, is uh, it's an ex Midland railway locomotive. I bought this second hand again. So it's been populated with a locomotive crew in there and some real coal and a little bit of weathering, but not too much. Really nice locomotive. It does make me wonder who out there buys these things to trade them in very shortly afterwards. Uh, but their loss is our gain, is it not? Um, runs really well um, and it's the only example of this particular type of locomotive from Backman that I have. Um, which, uh, considering how beautiful this little locomotive is and how well it runs, it's quite surprising. I think people are just hanging on to them. They are such a good locomotive that they just don't turn up second hand. Right, next to it we have another A4, but this gives us a chance to compare the older Backman model with the newer Hornby model. So that was uh, Gillamart, and this is... Dominion of New Zealand and despite being an older model this locomotive does actually hold its own uh, see number there 60013 with the crest of New Zealand I'm guessing it does hold its own it's not as good as the Hornby model but it's certainly been around a lot longer you see there the early crest 
it's certainly very credible. It runs okay, perhaps not as well as the Hornby example, uh, but for the price, um, I was quite happy to get it. Again, bought second hand, uh, perfectly happy with it, runs okay. Um, no real issues to report. It has been uh, populated in there with a crew by a previous owner and I'm very very happy with it. Um, so it will quite happily sit on shed alongside the Hornby examples. I've got no issues whatsoever. Sometimes you find that uh, an older locomotive sticks out like a sore thumb next to its more modern counterpart but in this case, the A4s, they, they don't. The Helgen Class 128 diesel parcel unit. Now, a, a very odd little beast, and certainly very vibrant in its Royal Mail letters livery. Uh, I bought this when they started to go um, in the sales, and uh, you can certainly get this particular livery example for around the 50 notes, uh, maybe just a little bit more. Uh, from an, a number of places actually. Uh, I can't remember where I got this from. It probably happens, but I have noticed that a few other places are doing them at knockdown price as well. Runs lovely, weighs a ton, and can actually haul a very unprototypically long load should you choose to. Um, used exclusively for carrying parcels back in the days of uh, Red Star and Royal Mail traffic going by rail. Next to that we have, uh, again this is going to have to be a helicopter shot simply by virtue of uh, everything being alongside it. This uh, featured in the recent box opening and review, 46053, Bankman Class 46, nothing much really to add to that. A uh, very nice model, works pretty well. But next to it we have uh, again from Bankman, this is the newer release of the Class 45. But I do quite like these big locomotives, I didn't think I would, but I've grown to like them as I found them second hand. Behind that we have a Bankman Collectors Club Special Edition. Uh, this is, I'm uh, really struggling to, to get in there, Stevenson Clark Limited. Uh, private owner livery of a uh, former Great Western Pannier tank sold out of service by British Rail to Stevenson Clark worked into the ground it has to be said and for a great many decades it was debatable that this locomotive would ever get restored such was the state that it, um, the bits and pieces were in so I think it existed as a kit of dismantled parts for a very long time but it was subsequently put back together and when it was first steamed, they painted it back into this livery, which is the, obviously the livery of the company that had last run it, uh, for a brief period. And uh, Backman produced as a special for the Collectors Club this model of it. And I do like this. And normally, um, this is one of the staple locomotives for Grove Street Yard, but will be retired from it, I guess, now that proper MSC liveried locomotives have become available. Behind it we have another of, um, I've talked about these before, the TMC Shunter's Match Wagons, uh, former Conflats, there's one there, that's the weathered example. Behind that, uh, last two for this video actually, because I got complaints from Zoe that I make my videos too long, so there will be uh, a fifth part to this video, but uh, for now we've got uh, my Bankman Fairburn tank. Behind that we have the standard class 4 tank locomotive. Always had a soft spot for these since Hornby 00 days. I would love to get a model from Backman of uh, either 80054, 80059 or 80033 which were the three identities that Hornby 00 put out its models in. As far as I'm aware none of those three have actually ever been released. I wait to be contradicted on that, so I'm not infallible, uh, but uh, if one of those identities came along I really would snaffle one up, but for the time being this is my only standard class 4 example. Right, I'm going a bit hoarse here from all the talking, so just a quick overview there. We've got four tankers, uh, which the back two, in fact no, the front two and the back right one, they were all a model zone special commission, a four pack actually, uh, and then that one with the shell and the BP logo was the final one from the Hereford Model Centre. Well there we go, um, we've got a lot of stuff here lying around on Grove Street Yard in storage for the winter, but there is more to come, but I'm going to leave that for uh, an unscheduled part five. 
Until then, I hope this has been informative to you. Thank you very much for watching this. It really is appreciated having you along for the ride. Don't forget to like this video and share it too and uh, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done that because of course you'll then become first to know when new videos are put on up. But uh, until next time, you take very good care of yourself and this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying bye for now. My name is Deza. I plow the space lanes, picking up debris and salvaging derelicts. It's a dangerous job, but the pay is good. At least I used to think so, before my ship came across our last derelict. We thought it was the payday of a lifetime. We were wrong. Nobody should have to go through what I did on that derelict. I barely made it out. Now they want me to go back. <laughs>